In the last presentation, we have understood what is nested for loop and how it works. Now in this presentation, we will understand what is nested while loop and how it works. So without any further delay, let's get started. There is only one topic we need to understand, which is nested while loop. We will understand this topic in details. So let's get started. Let's first understand what is nested while loop. Nested while loop is a while loop within a while loop. So when a while loop is contained within another while loop, then it is called a nested while loop. That structure itself is called nested while loop. Now, in order to understand how nested while loop works, let's consider one simple example. Let's say we want to iterate over two lists, list 1 and list 2. Each list contains three items and we want to print the items of those lists in a specific order. For this purpose, we can use nested while loop. But first, we need to declare those lists. So let's create these lists first. Let's create list 1 and assign 1, 2, 3 to it. And then after this, let's create list 2 and assign 4, 5, 6 to it. So there are three items in list 1, 1, 2 and 3. And there are three items in list 2, 4, 5 and 6. Now our job is to print these items in a specific order. The order is like this. We first want to print 1, 4 then 1, 5, then 1, 6, then 2, 4, then 2, 5, then 2, 6, then 3, 4, then 3, 5, then 3, 6. This is what we want to print. And for this, we can use nested while loop. Now, in order to do this, first we need to understand that we can access each item of these lists using their indices. For this purpose, we need to declare two variables. Let's say i and j. These variables will represent the index of one item of these lists at a time, respectively. Variable i will represent the index of one item at a time of list 1 and variable j will represent the index of one item at a time of list 2. So now let's declare those variables. Let's declare i and initialize it to 0. Because we first want to access the first item of this list. i equal to 0 means that we want to access item at index 0. We know index always starts from 0. Therefore, we will access this item using this variable i. And now we need variable j also. And we need to initialize it to 0 as well. Now, let's move on to the main logic of this code. We want to write the nested while loop structure in such a way that we would be able to print these items in the order which we want. We first want to print 1, 4, then 1, 5, then 1, 6, then 2, 4, 2, 5, 2, 6, then 3, 4, 3, 5, 3, 6. Let's write two while statements. The first while statement looks like this. While i less than len list 1. Here we are using len function and we are passing list 1 to it. Len function will return the length of any list we pass to it. We already know this. Here we are passing list 1 to len function. This len function will return value 3. Eventually at runtime, this will be replaced by 3. So eventually we are checking while i less than 3. We know that initially i is 0. Therefore this condition will be satisfied. And then we can go inside this while loop and execute the rest of the statements. But when i becomes 3, then this condition becomes false and we will get outside of this while loop. And this makes sense also. Because when i becomes 3, this means that we have read all the items of this list. Inside this while loop, we definitely need to increment the value of i by 1 every time. In this way, we can run this loop. Now within this while loop, we need another while loop so that we can iterate over list 2. This time the statement looks like this. While j less than len list 2. Here we are passing list 2 as the argument to len function. This len function will return 3 because the length of list 2 is also 3. There are 3 items in this list. And here we have j. We are checking is j less than 3. 
Now initially we know that i is 0, therefore this condition is satisfied and j is also 0, therefore this condition is also satisfied. So we have i equal to 0 and j equal to 0. This means that we would be able to access these two items of these lists. Now we can print these items. We first want to print 1, 4. So for this purpose we can use this print statement print list 1 i comma list 2 j. This comma operator allows us to add white space between list 1 i and list 2 j. What is list 1 i? i is 0, therefore list 1 0 will give us 1. And what is list 2 j? j is 0, therefore list 2 0 will give us 4. Eventually at runtime, we will get 1 4 on the screen. Now after this, the next step is to increment the j by 1. j must be incremented by 1 so that we can move to the next item in this list. The next item is 5, therefore the next time when we run this while loop, list 2 j will be replaced by 5. In this way, we can continue. After completion of this while loop, we know that we will get 1, 4, 1, 5 and 1, 6 on the screen. After printing these values, we want to print a new line and then start printing 2, 4, 2, 5 and 2, 6. In order to print a new line, we need this statement. Print. There is no need to pass any argument to this print function. We can simply write print here. After this, we just need to increment the value of i by 1 so that i becomes 1 in the next iteration. In this way, we can continue running these two loops. Now let's understand how these values will be printed on the screen in the way we want. For this purpose, let's run this code line by line. Let's first create variable i and initialize it to 0. This is how variable i looks like. In reality, i is the name given to this object with value 0. After this, j is also initialized to 0. Here we now have variable j and it is initialized to 0. Now we need to check this condition. Is i less than len of list 1? Len of list 1 is 3 and i is less than 3. Therefore, this condition is satisfied. Now we can continue. This time we need to check is j less than len of list 2? This is also true because j is 0. Now we need to continue and print list 1i, comma list 2j. What is list 1i? i must be replaced by 0 and j must also be replaced by 0. List 1 0 is 1 and list 2 0 is 4. So eventually at runtime, 1 and 4 will be printed on the screen. After this, j must be incremented by 1. This time, j becomes 1. Now we need to check this condition. Is j less than len of list 2? Yes, because 1 is less than 3. Now we need to continue and print list 1 i, comma list 2 j. This time i is 0 and j is 1. We can see here i is 0 and j is 1. Therefore, 1 will be printed and then 5 will be printed. So we will get 1, 5 on the screen. Then after this, j must be incremented by 1. This time j becomes 2. Now we need to check this condition once again. Is j less than len of list 2? Yes, 2 is less than 3. Therefore, we must print list 1, 0 and then list 2, 2. What is list 1, 0? List 1, 0 is 1. What is list 2, 2? List 2, 2 is 6. Therefore, 1 and 6 will be printed on the screen. After this, j must be incremented by 1. This time, j becomes 3. Now again, we need to check this condition. Is j less than len of list 2? We know that len of list 2 is 3 and j is also 3. 3 is not less than 3, therefore this becomes false. Hence, we must get outside of this while loop. While loop terminates in this case. This time, we need to print a new line. So, we'll get a new line here. After this, i must be incremented by 1. This time, i becomes 1. Now, we need to check this condition. Is i less than len of list 1? Yes, 1 is less than 3. This condition is satisfied, so we'll get inside this while loop. But there is one problem when we get inside this while loop. 
we know that variable j is pointing to this value 3 and this means that now we need to check is 3 less than 3 and the condition becomes false. We want to print 2 and 4. This means that we want j to be 0. In order to print 4, we want j equal to 0. This means that after this while statement, we need to reinitialize j to 0. For this purpose, what we can do is that we can shift this line after this while loop. This is how our code looks like. Now j equal to 0 is within this while loop. After checking this condition, when this condition is satisfied, we'll get inside and j is reinitialized to 0. We know that this condition is satisfied at this point because 1 is less than 3. Now we need to go inside this while loop and we need to reinitialize j to 0. This time, j becomes 0. At this point, the inner while loop will run in the same way. And as we know that i is 1 and j is 0, therefore, first 2, 4 will be printed. Then after this, 2, 5 will be printed and then 2, 6. After this, the new line will be displayed, as we can see, and then i is incremented by 1. This becomes 2. And as we know that i is 2, this condition is satisfied because 2 is still less than 3. Therefore, we will go inside and j will receive value 0. Therefore, we need to change this value to 0. Now, we have 2, 0 here. This means that first 3, 4 will be displayed because of this inner while loop. Then 3, 5 and then 3, 6 will be displayed. So, we will get 3, 4, 3, 5 and 3, 6 on the screen. Then after this, new line will be printed. And then i is incremented by 1. At this point, i becomes 3. And this time, this condition becomes false because 3 is not less than 3. Therefore, this while loop will terminate at this point. So, just like nested for loop, we can use nested while loop to display these type of patterns on the screen. So, nested while loop is also useful in printing these type of patterns. I hope with this it is clear how to use nested while loop. And now, with this we are done with this topic and hence we are done with this lecture. Okay friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this presentation. I will see you in the next one.